Hello everyone, I'm here to show you how to use NVivo to record documents. So to begin any NVivo session, uh, you're going to be downloading NVivo and you'll find it on the bottom of your screen in your launch pad um, under NVivo, this little circle guy. And then you can begin to import documents by starting off with internals. So this internals uh, tells you that these are documents that you're going to internally hold in this particular in vivo session. Externals would be things that you are going to use for your qualitative data but you can't get it into the program because it's a printed book or something else. Uh, so to import data we go to this little lovely data button and you can download documents so you can select from any of your various folders um, and we can also go to PDFs and look at any of those. Um, just select it and it will become part of this internals folder. So what I then did is to double click um, on a Mac or right click with Windows and create a new folder because I want to keep my um, data organized. So I made a folder called induction. So I'm going to take the documents that I downloaded and you just have to grab them, pull them across and stick them in the induction folder. So that's how that works. Okay, now that keeps things organized. So now I'm going to decide to code some data. So let's take an article, double click on it. A couple things happen when you do that. First, it shows up as an open item. It also comes up in this detail screen, they call it. And the details screen gives you the actual piece of data. And from there, I can go through and I took this from my Zotero account, so it's already highlighted. And now I'm going to add some codes. So perhaps I want to code the research question. So I'm going to create a node. Node is like code, that's why they rhyme, for the research question. So any article I have, I want to be able to find that easily. So done and done. Um, perhaps I also am interested in teacher beliefs and attitudes in this particular study. So um, let's see. Here we have Research shows that teachers' beliefs about students can lead to disparity in expectations. So what I did with this particular section is I actually already coded it. Well, how would I know that I coded it already? Well, you can go to View and take a look at Coding Stripes. So I'm going to look at what have I already coded. And it pops up here on the right hand side. So I created a node for uh, teacher perceptions of students, um, suburban lifestyle, and um, over the top I also had research questions somewhere in there. Um, so basically now I, I have my different nodes, right? And I can see on the right side um, where I have already coded for that. But how many times have I talked about a particular topic? So if you want to see, so you basically go through, you highlight the information you want, you set up a node for it. Uh, let's see. Um, mm -mm -mm. Oh, I'm still in view. Oops. Sorry. Um, you create a node for it, or another way you could do it is to highlight a section and right click on it. 
and you have a couple options. You can either start a new node or you can add it to existing nodes that you already have. And if you click existing nodes, up pops the nodes I've already created. So suburban is a topic that I'm working on, um, funding the new structure. But then this teacher perception of students is really broken down into a number of categories. So I created some sub notes. Now in order to do that, um, you can just create a node um, and set it up, you know, node I like. And from there, when you want to take a look at your nodes, you can decide, do you want it under this topic? Or you could drag it down into suburban as a topic. Um, so you can choose to make it a subsection of anything you wish, right? You can also delete it if you don't really want it. And luckily they tell you, are you sure you wanted to delete that? Yes, I should. So perhaps I want to start a theme with my nodes and figure out which documents have I coded for frustration. Well, by double clicking on any of the nodes, it will tell you which document you had that particular one listed. It will give you the section that you highlighted and coded for that particular topic, right? And so you can find where that node is in any of the documents that you've imported, which can be useful. Um, you could also similarly set up a query. So if you are interested in doing a query, um, you can actually go to the query button up here and search your text. So maybe I want to search for word frequency. Well, then I can decide do I want just that exact word or all the different stem versions like talking, talked, um, talkers, whatever. And so I go ahead and run my query and this is going to now look through all the documents I've included and what do you know, teachers comes up as the most frequent word. Uh, and from there you can also um, you know, figure out how many times it's been said. I think this one is funny. It's just the length of the word by the number of letters. Tee hee. Um, and similar words that came up relating to it. So this is one way um, that you can try to find some themes by seeing what types of words comes up most frequently. And one of the things I like about this is they do not recognize words like the or of um, conjunctions because of course those are going to come up a lot um, and that doesn't um, get in the way of being able to see your actual data. So that's my first video. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll be back for more.